In 2010, I decided to make one of the hardest decisions of my tiny life so far. I decided to drop out of university. There is no denying that school Stevie was a clever Stevie. At the age of 17, I would have given Hermione herself a run for her galleons, had she been interred in a West London comprehensive rather than tootling about some enchanted castle. I got good GCSEs and good A-levels, and this obviously meant I was going to go to university. Clever people universityed. I couldn't imagine myself not going to university, which is where my problems started. I was never the most assured of what it was I wanted to study. Just that I wanted to study something and have that romanticised bohemian lifestyle of learning great things. I went back and forth between maths and English literature, unlikely pair that they are. As applications went in, the most recent roll of the die came up literature, and thus I applied and thus I got rejected. I was stunned. I had A's enough to my name to market my own brand of screamingly good alphabet soup, and yet no one wanted me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't fail at things, I never had. And I didn't understand what it was I'd done wrong. This wasn't some sort of simple test that I could have returned to me to work out the answers for next time. It didn't have marks or grade boundaries or constructive criticism in any form. I worried that this was simply something beyond me. Clearly there was something that very clever admissions people could see was lacking in me. And that was it. I contained some foregone Hamasha that would forever be my doom. I had before me very little choice but to try again next year. And I point blankly refused to make that choice. The idea of working and travelling for a year, of seeing the sights that so excited so many of my friends, horrified and terrified me. I literally had no idea what to do with myself. Until I found a way of sneaking under the lines. I could change my subject choice, and some universities would reconsider me. So English literature became maths, and Warwick gave me an offer, and to Coventry I was sent. Warwick started badly and continued worse. I don't think I understood how to learn there. Modules were taught mostly through lectures, and I couldn't keep up. I was too deaf to hear the tutors. I read too slowly through squinting dyslexia to copy down what was being bashed out on the blackboards. I had a fourth year who was meant to supervise me along with a handful of other bright eyes, but they struggled to even communicate their greetings, let alone complex mathematics. At school, I'd been a good number cruncher, able to differentiate this and simplify that, but university maths was cold and confusing and seemed to lack my friend numbers entirely. At the end of my first year, I knew I was in trouble. I honestly didn't feel like I'd learnt a single thing. I sat there, night after night, in front of impenetrable problem sheets, waiting for understanding to dawn. And it never did. At the end of my first year, I knew I couldn't continue. But then again, I literally couldn't envision any other option. Bullheaded and brutish, I gathered up my life and I stayed. Second year began and I crumbled away. It's hard to really remember those days. I think my mind went somewhere else for long periods of time. I started out with all optimism, enthusiasm and determination held tight but soon hit the same unrelenting brick walls that I had battered myself against before. I slept a lot, sometimes 18, 20 hours a day. I didn't really leave my room. I was scared to run into housemates I felt bullied by. And I just really couldn't see any viable way out. Any real reason to do anything. I played a little, read a little, sang a little. That's it. From an entire year's worth of time, I remember about six staid and stuffy sketches. I did do a small course in history and English, and I remember that had its shrill and panicked moments as well. But it was something kind of solid, when all else was a torrent unfaceable. I remember moments of excitement with that of nodding along in agreement and essays I created and was proud of. I stopped attending anything to do with maths at all. Exams ticked by as I sat in my room and hid. The decision came slowly. 
there wasn't a single moment where my resolve hardened and I decided to leave. The thought tickled at the edge of my mind in its terrifying unthinkableness. And I flirted with it, bit by aching bit, as I didn't attend this and further isolated myself from that. Maybe I never actually decided to drop out, and my grand statement at the beginning of this video was all a lie. Maybe I eventually just couldn't carry on anymore. And whilst I've been saying all this time that I didn't have a choice, I finally really didn't have a choice. I dropped out. I went home to my parents and broke to them that I wouldn't be going back to Warwick. Or maths. Not in September, not next year, not ever. And although this seems like it might be the low point in the story, it really isn't. By then, storms were starting to clear somewhat. I got a job, and then a better job. I saw doctors and family, and was outside in the daylight and talking to people again. And the memories of intrigue and interest I had found in history books and novels in that odd extra course I had taken, they'd taken root and were remembered. A part of my mind had opened up again, and brought back things I had once wanted. And eventually, half-hopingly, I applied for those subjects at that storybook-rare institution I'd once harboured dreams of. And they welcomed me. So although this is a story about dropping out of university, this is also a story about attending university, enjoying university, and graduating university. The latter only being possible at one place, because of the former not possible at another. Looking back on it now, I'm really happy that I reapplied and tried to study again. But... Even if I hadn't, that would have also been okay. Dropping out, to me, was the hardest thing. But it was also, without a doubt, the right thing. If I later hadn't got in somewhere else, or hadn't even applied somewhere else, that would have been fine. I could have stayed working in bookshops, what I'd spent the majority of my time between Warwick and Oxford actually doing. Or I could have applied for internships at literary agencies and publishers, and got on the job ladder sooner. Hell, I might have even written my damn novel by now. The point is, out of Warwick, I was moving and able. Whatever I was doing, it was better than that prison I'd made for myself in that tangled scar of a failed first degree. It was so hard to leave. For the loss of face and status. For having to explain to my parents and potential employers and my friends for even knowing what the fuck else to do with myself. But stepping into that void, it was the best thing I ever did. Terrifying though it was. You find amazing things in the unknown, especially when the known is not good. Often that space is possibility, beyond what you could have ever previously imagined for yourself. It took me a long time but I finally loosed myself from the trap of myself. And it was good. It took me to now. Which of the books has the most deaths? <laughs> Is it A, A Game of Thrones, B, Clash of Kings, C, Storm of Swords, or D, Feast for Crows? <laughs>